Hi there! In this video, we'll explore how to use white labeling in ThingsBoard. White labeling allows you to tailor your ThingsBoard instance to your brand and liking, which is especially useful for companies providing IoT solutions to their clients. From this video, you will learn how to customize the visual appearance, set up the color palette for the main page and login page, add your own logos, and edit email templates. With white labeling, you can fully adapt ThingsBoard to meet your needs and integrate it seamlessly into your brand. Let's get started. To open the white labeling settings, find and select this option in the left side menu. The first menu you will encounter is General, where you can find the appearance settings for your ThingsBoard instance. Let's explore the available functionalities from top to bottom, starting with the application title. This setting changes the label displayed on the browser tab. You can use it to set your company name or any other preferred title. For example, I will change the default title to my IoT platform and click the preview button in the bottom right corner to see the changes without saving them. This button is especially useful when making multiple adjustments and experimenting with the design. Next, let's customize the website icon, which appears on the browser tab next to the application name and update the logo that replaces the default ThingsBoard logo in the top left corner. The setup process for both is quite similar, as they require you to provide either an image file or a link to an image. Let's start with the website icon. Click Browse from Gallery to open the gallery. Here, select Upload Image if the desired image is not yet in the gallery, and click Browse to open the file explorer. Choose a pre-prepared image or simply drag and drop it into the Upload Image window, then click Upload. A preview of the icon will appear on the left. To set a new logo, do the same steps as with the icon. Browse from Gallery, Upload, and browse the files on the disk. A preview of the logo will appear on the left. As it is white on white, some of its details may not be clearly visible. Once you click Preview, all changes will become visible immediately. Additionally, you can specify the height of the logo in pixels. I will set the logo height to 60 pixels for this demonstration, then change it to 40. When combined with the changes in color scheme that we will touch in just a bit, this can create a really unique design that will only be associated with your instance. So, let's shift our focus to the primary palette and accent palette. These two elements define the color scheme of your instance. The primary palette controls the background and text color, while the accent palette defines colors for certain UI elements, such as toggles, checkboxes, and status bars. Click on Primary Palette to open the drop-down menu and choose one of the available UI color themes. For example, I'll select Indigo. The effects will appear as soon as you press the Preview button in the lower right corner. For the accent palette, do the exact same actions. It may take some navigation through the menus to see the effects, but it is quite noticeable nonetheless. Picking the color from the main palette changes only the basic appearance. You can also adjust the colors that appear during intermediary states and actions. Click the Customize button in the right part to open the color palette. Here, you can change the color from the predefined palette. Clicking the Primary Background button will open the window with a gradient. Pick the color that suits you here or type its number code in the row below the gradient. Click Select, then press Save Palette to apply these changes. Now, click Preview, and you will see the background color change to the selected one. Below, you can see the Advanced CSS button. Click it to open a window where you can enter your CSS code. This allows you to customize the appearance of your instance more deeply than palette changes alone. I will use the CSS code I have on hand to set a gradient background instead of a solid color for the left menu, change the icon and font colors, and customize the scroll bar style. Click Save in the Advanced CSS window, then Preview to see the changes. We move on to the lower part of the menu, where you can see two checkboxes, Hide Connectivity Dialog and Show Platform Name and Version. Hide Connectivity option controls the availability of the Check Connectivity option in the device setting, an option much needed in some specific scenarios. We won't touch them in this video. Show Platform Name and Version, on the other hand, spawns a label at the bottom part of the menu in the left part of the screen. 
You can change it to one that you like by simply changing the contents of the fields. I will name mine my IoT platform with the version of 1.0. Click Save to make all the changes persistent. If you decide to revert to the default things board design, click the red Reset to Default button. Next, let's switch to the second tab in the row, named Logan. This section allows you to create an alternative login page and personalize it. First, the platform will prompt you to enter a custom domain name. This field is required. It can match your company name or any other relevant identifier. Let me quickly walk you through the process of setting up login white labeling in ThingsBoard. ThingsBoard login white labeling is based on DNS names. Essentially, ThingsBoard determines which login page to display based on the DNS name in the URL that the user enters in their browser. To enable login white labeling, you first need a valid DNS name. Click the Create New button to the right of the Domain Name field. In the pop-up window, enter your pre-registered custom domain name. In this example, we will use platform.tbmq.io. Below, you will see a redirect URI template field and a section for configuring OAuth 2.0 clients, but we won't cover these features in this video. Click Add and follow the on-screen instructions to configure the CNAME record, pointing your domain to the primary domain of the ThingsBoard platform. After adding the record, click I've added CNAME records. Within a few seconds, the system will verify the record, and if everything is correct, the custom domain will be added to your ThingsBoard instance. Once configured, users will see your custom login page whenever they visit your domain. If you are hosting ThingsBoard yourself, you need to point your DNS name to the IP address of your load balancer or directly to your ThingsBoard instance. This setup ensures that users accessing your domain are routed correctly to your login page. We have a detailed text guide explaining how to set up these components. You'll find a link to it in the video description. Save the changes and open a new browser window. Enter the custom domain URL that we just configured. You should see the login form for your ThingsBoard instance. Now, let's proceed with customizing its appearance. The settings are similar to those on the General tab. You can change the application title and website icon, which appear on the Browser tab of the Login window. For the title, I will enter my login page and add a new icon. You already know how to do this. I will also replace the default logo with a custom one. Click Save and check the changes. For login window color settings, use the Primary Palette and Accent Palette options. Click on each and choose a predefined color or customize them to your preference by clicking Customize on the right and selecting the desired color. The Advanced CSS feature works the same way as on the General tab, but applies specifically to the login page. I will again use the CSS code I have on hand to demonstrate how this works. You can customize the color scheme according to your preferences. Click Save and check the changes. Scrolling further down, we have the dark foreground option. Enabling this checkbox changes the color of login window fields from white to black. This feature is especially useful when radically changing the color scheme of the login page. The next parameter is responsible for the background color of the login page. Clicking on it opens a color palette window. I will choose a darker color for contrast and click Select to confirm my choice. Then, save the changes to see the new background color of the login page. If you want to display additional instance version information, enable the Show Platform Name and Version option. Keep the current one or enter a custom platform name and version. You can also adjust their position relative to the login form. Click Save and preview the final look of your login window. Now, we move on to the Email Templates section, which defines the content of messages that are sent automatically by your ThingsBoard instance to the users. These may include account activation emails, password reset requests, and more. You can either use the default templates set by the system administrator or customize them to your preference. To do this, simply uncheck the designated checkbox and the Email Templates editing screen will appear. 
In the Mail Template drop-down menu, you will find a list of different email templates that can be customized. Let's select the password reset email as our example. Right below the template selection, you will see the email subject row. You can modify it to make the email subject stand out from regular messages. Next, we see the main part of the Mail Templates section, a classic text editor that allows you to edit your mail message. Let me change the text to the one that I like more than the default one and also make it a bit larger. This editor should feel familiar to anyone who has worked with text editing software. Once you have finished editing the text, click Save to apply the changes. These changes will immediately take effect for emails that your ThingsBoard instance sends to customers for password resets. For custom translation and custom menu functions, we are going to talk about them in future videos. Stay tuned to learn how to use these functions in all their power. For those of you who have made it this far, here's a useful tip. You can configure certain widget elements, such as the background or line color on a chart, to use colors from the primary or accent color palette set in the General tab of White Labeling Settings. To demonstrate this, I've created a dashboard and placed a button widget on it. Now, I'll enter Edit Mode and click the pencil icon above the widget to open the Edit menu. Move down to the Color Palette section and click the Background Selector. This will open the Color Selection window. At the top of the window, above the gradient, you'll see an option called Primary Colors. Click on it, and you will see the color palette used by white labeling. Select a color from the available options and click Select. To change the color of the widget's font and icons, follow the same steps, but this time, click at the main color. Then, in the top of the window, click the arrow symbol to scroll the selector and click Accent Colors. Here, pick the color in the same way as before. Click Select, then Apply in the upper right corner to save the changes. Note that we are using CSS to define the icon color, so only the font color has changed. That's it. The widget's main and background colors now match the main design of your instance. Do not forget to click Save in the upper right corner to apply the changes. Now we know how to change and adjust the majority of visual aspects of the ThingsBoard instance and the login page that leads to it. Thank you for watching all the way to the end. Feel free to leave your questions and thoughts in the comment section. See you in the next video.